Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so glad that you're joining in this special time. If this is your first time to join with us in online worship, we're particularly pleased that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. We want to encourage you to use our contact form. The uh, link to that is pinned right in the comment section. There's a QR code for it that's appearing on your screen as well. And this is a way that we can get to know you, that we can connect with you, that we can help you connect in uh, to grow in your life of faith. There's a place there for you to put your contact information, of course. Please make sure to put your email address there so that we can send you the e-newsletter that has all of the information about all of the ways to connect with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And then please note that in that contact form there is a place for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So we just encourage everyone to use that contact form today. When we gather for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And that means that we're going to participate. Go ahead and sing the songs and pray the prayers. Light a candle if that helps you to focus. We encourage you to turn off other distractions and devices and really just come together and participate in worship. This isn't just a random video that you're watching. It is worship of God and worship with one another. So please uh, covenant with us to participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way that we're in the comment section today, the way we comment on things, the way we may be gathered with other people, wherever it is that we are, the way that we're sending this worship out into the world, that all of it will be a blessing to everyone who is participating today. We are celebrating communion for all people today. So you're going to want to gather up a piece of bread or baked good or cracker and some juice or some kind of beverage so that you can join in sharing in the love and grace that is available to everyone through eating this special meal. Today, our communion celebration is a part of world communion celebration, remembering that we join together in sharing the bread and cup with Christians all over the world, all connected together in Jesus Christ at his table of love. All of our worship prayers and songs today, they're gonna to follow the ancient and living prayer form that we call the Great Thanksgiving. It's a form of praying at Jesus' table that Christians have been using for thousands of years. It has three parts, just like our understanding of God as being one in three, the Trinity, often described as God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We will give thanks to God, the Creator, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit who empowers. To begin, we come to Jesus' table of love, offering our confession. And then we'll continue with prayers that we say together out loud, that we will listen to with open hearts, and that we will hold in silence, all in confidence of Jesus' very real presence with us through the whole process. This culminates in eating the bread and drinking from the cup that we've brought today. So let's join together now in this celebration of receiving grace at Jesus' table of love, connected throughout the world in all times and all places. Please join us in singing, I Come With Joy. God's people gather for worship in so many ways, online and in buildings and in small groups, outside in God's creation, at home, in song and silence with tears and shouts of joy. So we join in this worldwide chorus of all who are loving and following Jesus today. And you are invited to join in this meal at Jesus' table of love today. Wherever you are and whoever you are, church member or not a church member, with your culture and race, whatever your age, with your gender identity and sexual orientation, sitting alone or gathered with others, in the fullness of who you are, even if you feel empty, you are welcome right now and you are not alone as we gather at Jesus' table in all of these different places and times.
I'm Liz Schwarzkopf. As we celebrate communion for all people in the world today, we come to Jesus' table in prayer and confession. Please join with me in a spirit of prayer for our prayer of confession. Open our hearts today, O Lord, to feel the powerful strength and love you have for us. Help us to listen, not only with our ears, but with our spirits, for your words of compassion and healing. For we confess that we do not always love you with all that we are. We do things we should not and leave undone things that we should. We create barriers between neighbors and between countries, and we turn away from those who cry for help. In these moments of silence, please offer your brokenness and confessions to our loving God. Loving God, forgive us and set us free. Help us live into the hope of your calling that your kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Friends, remember that even when we feel dry and empty, God's grace and love overflows. We are called and claimed by the God of all things and by the abundance of God's grace and by the power of God's love. Thanks be to God. Please join me in sharing the forgiveness and peace of Jesus Christ with one another. You can say peace be with you and respond and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, I am Molly Barrett. I have been a member of Douglas Avenue for over 10 years now, along with my husband, Rex Gradeless. We are in the Young Adult Sunday School class. I also am on the SPRC committee, and I am the founder of Compass for Kids. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Hannah, and my favorite thing about church is singing. Peace be with you. I'm Gregory Vaughn Palmer, and I'm the interim resident bishop of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference. It's my privilege to greet you on this Lord's Day. And Douglas Avenue, you are all of that and a bag of chips and a pickle and maybe a strawberry soda too. I say all of that to say I thank you for your fabulous ministry, all the ways that you are serving people with head and with heart and building their lives that they might be and become who God has called them to be in Jesus Christ. I want you to know that I extend to you the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I wanna use these words from the Apostle Paul, who said in Romans and the 15th chapter, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please join me in our great Thanksgiving prayers First, giving thanks to God our Creator. There are spoken prayers for you and the words for those will be on the screen. You are invited to join in the motions too for our first responsive prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed people in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please join us in singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Yay, it's time for Small Talk. I want to invite all the children who are joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your screen, to your device, so that you can see and hear everything that's going on with Small Talk. Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, who's our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in really close right now for Small Talk. Okay, hi, good morning. I am Miss Lori and this is this is Laud. He has his he has his safari hat. This is Laud the Lamb and his helper Cohen. We've been on safari today. We have been hunting we've been hunting Bibles. We've been looking for Bibles. Yes, yes, in the wilds of or backyard backyard again right yeah we've been hunting Bibles and Laud is so excited because he found one it's a Bible but it says the guidebook this is what our youth are getting our six through college are getting these guidebooks and it's just the Bible but a guidebook and our younger kids have been getting, our third through fifth graders have been getting a different Bible, but a Bible just for them. And last Sunday was Bible Sunday. Today is kind of a continuation of Bible Sunday. So I am so glad that our hunting lad found this Bible. But you know what? It's getting ready to rain. So I think we better get inside. If you didn't go to church last week or this week and you've been online, Law doesn't like the rain. He hates the rain. Just give the church office a call and we'll get your kiddo their own Bible. Bye guys. Now we continue with our great Thanksgiving prayers, giving thanks to Jesus Christ, our savior and remembering Jesus's gift to us of this communion meal. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Holy are you, creating God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the end of the earth, to make disciples of all nations. And we remember today especially that his family in all the world joins together at his holy table of love. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Please join us in singing, In Christ There Is No East or West.
I'm Steve Dunker. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Today's reading from the Bible is Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 through 39. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself into Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. May God bless the hearing and understanding of the Bible verse we have received today. Amen. Our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family is joining with Christians and uh, with churches all around the world in celebration of World Communion. Worldwide Communion Sunday originated in 1933 in Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh. Dr. Hugh Thompson Kerr, Shadyside's pastor, conceived of a World Communion Sunday with the goal to bring churches together in a service of Christian unity, remembering the importance of the Church of Jesus Christ and how each congregation is interconnected with another. The organization now known as the National Council of Churches endorsed World Communion Sunday in 1940. However, it was during World War II that the observance of World Communion Sunday really began to gain momentum and strength as people of faith found themselves trying to keep their world from coming apart. World Communion Sunday symbolized the effort to hold things together in a spiritual sense emphasizing that we are one in Jesus Christ. For 80 years, World Communion has been a Sunday where Christians seek to bridge the divides that seem to grow between us, between our communion tables of one denomination or type with those of another. While churches through the ages have often tried to put restrictive order and stringent rules around the communion table, God continues to show us that our celebration of communion is at Jesus' table. Because it is Jesus' table, we know that it transcends space and time. We are part of one great metaphorical table throughout the world, even though we may be in separate buildings or separate gatherings, even though may, some may gather in church buildings and some may gather online from their homes, even though we may worship on Sunday or on a weekday in English or in Spanish, in opulence or in poverty, in a crowd or alone. Jesus unites our fragmented tables throughout all time and space into one table of love for all people. And because it is Jesus' table, everyone is welcome. Because it's Jesus. Jesus, who ate with tax collectors and prostitutes. Jesus, who shared his last meal with people who would deny him and run away from him. Jesus, who saw no one as being outside the love and grace of God. Jesus embodied God's radical hospitality and extravagant grace, eating with outcasts, picnicking with masses on the hillsides, and sharing meals in the homes of people who were far outside of the religious rules of the day. So that same grace and radical welcome is extended even to us, even today. 
We are all invited to be right here at Jesus' table of love. We can actually be united at Jesus' table of love. We need the healing of our many self-inflicted wounds of division that is found in sharing at Jesus' table of love. I find this such a powerful promise and a tangible experience of hope for us in our living of these days. We are joined together in Jesus' table of love, made family with one another through our loving and following of Jesus, being shaped into his disciples to bring God's kingdom to reality here on earth as it is in heaven. In our Bible reading that Steve shared with us today, the Apostle Paul uses this powerful image of being made family through Jesus Christ. Paul writes, There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Paul is using this family metaphor and a rhetorical device of erasing differences to make a radically scandalous proclamation of being united together in Jesus Christ. Paul hits up a few of the big differences of his time. Jew and Greek, slave and free, male and female. These were differences that divided people in physical spaces, in socioeconomic spaces, in the ability to speak in public, in the ability to be safe, in the ability to make a living or even just have the opportunity to live. These were some big, old, ugly separations. And Paul has the audacity to proclaim that Jesus showed us over and over that all are included in God's family, that all are needed in God's family to be complete. All are necessary. All. That somehow the powerful love of God in Jesus Christ is the way forward. This expansive and explosive declaration of the all-encompassing love of God for all people has so much power and possibility to change how we see the world for us and our families and our communities. Like learning about and struggling with our own participation in white supremacy, meaning whiteness is considered the good normative way of being, whether we talk about it or espouse it or believe it or not. And our systems are set up to reinforce this white supremacist belief and way of life. That is what white supremacy is. And while we learn and grapple and see this, how do we learn to act in anti-racist ways to break the cycle? Being together at Jesus' table of love helps us really see all of God's people as full and equal siblings with us in God's family. Being together at Jesus' table of love is a part of breaking open these destructive systems. Or like learning about and struggling with the way the lure of power, influence, and wealth have subsumed us, even our identity as Christians. That as people who confess to love and follow Jesus, we too often love and follow lots of other things and might even try to dress it up as Christian, like a political identity or a political leader or a political stance that ultimately have nothing to do with our true identity in Jesus Christ. Being together at Jesus' table of love is part of breaking this idolatry. Or how about the daily struggle with addiction or having enough resources or with depression or any of the forces of chaos that can subsume healthy living for us and our families? Too often we feel like there is no way and no how that healing can be ours, that, that life could possibly be different, that the chains of chaos can be broken. But today, being together at Jesus' table of a love is a part of breaking those chains. The sacramental table of Holy Communion is the, the beating heart of Christian worship throughout the world. It is, unites us through its holy DNA, if you will, as one family through Jesus Christ. 
There are forces of wickedness and injustice throughout the world that seek to divide us, to separate us from one another, and to keep us from seeing the wholeness of God's people and our shared longings for hope and peace and equity. This single table of love is a testament to our unity as God's one family. There are currents of isolation and shame within our own lives that push us away from coming to Jesus' table of love. These voices that you hear inside you are wrong. You are lovable. You are accepted. You are worthy. You are capable. You are wanted. You are a full and important and wonderful part of God's family. This table of love is our family celebration held for you. This is Jesus' table of love that we gather around. And he is determined that we send this invitation to dine to all the people throughout the, all the world. All are invited to experience Christ's gracious welcome. All are invited to dine together as part of one family, indivisible as siblings together with Christ. All are invited to set aside doubt and shame and say yes to Jesus' invitation. You are beloved. You are family. You belong. Amen. Please join us in singing the first verse of One Bread, One Body. Good morning. My name is Cindy Arnold and I am a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm also a member of the young adult Sunday school class and I love to garden in the community garden here. Would you join me in a spirit of prayer? Good morning, Lord. Good morning and thank you for all that we have lifted up to you already today. For your love, peace, forgiveness, and unity, unity with you, Lord, and unity with each other, which we focus specifically on, on this World Communion Sunday. Lord, in a world where it is so very easy to separate into our little groups based on all the ways we are different, transform our hearts to be united in your love and celebrate those differences as unique ways that your image shines through each of us. On this World Communion Sunday, Lord, help everyone celebrating at your table today know your presence in a deep and lasting way. Lord, in this life of both and, we bring our gratitude and praise as well as the concerns and worries of our hearts. Lord, our world seeks your healing and protection in so many ways. Please heal and comfort all those who experience physical and mental illness. Comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones, livelihoods, and dreams. Bring justice and healing to systems 
where oppression exists. Support those impacted and displaced by natural and human disasters. Lord, from Afghanistan to Haiti, from one coast of our country to the other, and even right here in Springfield, please heal our world. And Lord, give us the wisdom, vision, courage, and compassion to be your hands and feet in those situations. Because even as we ask you to intervene, Lord, we acknowledge that you are calling us to be part of your healing plan. Close to home here, Lord, we ask for your continued presence and blessings on Compass for Kids and Wouldn't It Be Lovely and even today's Crop Walk and all of the agencies who support those experiencing food insecurity in our area. Lord, move the hearts of those walking today and bring support to all those who might need it. And Lord, as we continue to pray the words that you taught us to pray, help us to know your presence in a new way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we conclude our great Thanksgiving prayers, I encourage you to bring close your bread and your cup so that we can especially pray with them. We will invite the Holy Spirit to fill and empower our meal. And I encourage you now to lift up your hands over your bread and cup as we pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the living body of Christ, redeemed and empowered by his saving love. You can put your hands down. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Jesus comes again and we feast with him and one another face to face at his heavenly banquet table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, connected in all places and at all times, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And let all God's people say, Amen. 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 And all the Compass volunteers say, Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And all God's people say, Amen. The bread and juice, the baked good cracker, the beverage that you have brought uh, with us today, that all of these that we're going to eat are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us and healing us and changing us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your piece of bread. Eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. Now I invite you to pick up your cup. Drink and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. And please join with me now in our prayer of thanks, and that'll be printed right on the screen for you to pray with me. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us through the bread and cup. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. I am Janet Schmidt, organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. 
and I want to thank you for your generous support of the programs and ministries of our church. September was a busy month, and many of you stepped up to put your faith into action. Whether you worked in the community garden, provided food for the micro pantry, attended the Wouldn't It Be Lovely golf outing or the Little Black Dress Gala, supported the Compass Back to School Brunch, or voted for Compass in the State Farm Neighborhood Challenge. Whether you donated in support of UMW Missions or helped as a member of the hospitality team, your actions are making a difference in our community. As we enter October, there are new ways in which you can step forward to support the missions of our church. This afternoon is a crop walk to end hunger. I am looking forward to walking with Team Captain Becca Philbrick, Pastor Meredith, and our other walkers. If you would like to support this effort, there is still time. You can make your contribution using our online giving portal. Simply use the QR code on your screen to navigate to the website and choose Crop Walk from the drop-down menu. Next Saturday, the associates of Wouldn't It Be Lovely will be having another of their fabulous showcase sales from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. Please share the social media posts on the church Facebook page to ensure everyone knows of this important event. Then, join us on Saturday for beautiful furniture, wall art, clothing, and other items. Then be watching for information updates as the church is planning another COVID vaccine clinic later in the month. And finally, Trunk or Treat will return on Sunday, October 31st. Of course, your monetary donations also play an important role in providing these programs. You know that we try to make it as easy as possible to give during these times of continued social distancing. If you have any questions or need help completing your donation, please reach out to Jesse in the church office. When was the last time you shared a meal with someone on the other side of the world? Jesus prayed that we would be one, yet when we look at the world today, too often we see his followers divided while the world's most pressing needs go unaddressed. If we focus on the forces that pull us apart, it's easy to feel discouraged, overwhelmed, and anything but united. But on World Communion Sunday, the first Sunday in October, we celebrate what binds us together, the love of Christ that empowers us to make this world a better place as one people committed to one purpose. This rich ecumenical tradition of World Communion Sunday that began about 80 years ago celebrates the diversity of believers of all ethnic backgrounds. Through your generous gift on this special Sunday of the United Methodist Church, we do more together to promote unity by empowering education. Your support provides scholarships and in-service training programs for U.S. racial and ethnic students and international students on both undergraduate and graduate levels, giving them tools they need to transform the world. Together, we equip students from around the globe to shape a unified future in so many ways by helping the least of these know the mercy and love of Jesus. As believers unite on World Communion Sunday, our bread may be different, but we share our love for the bread of life. As we share the fruit of the vine, our commitment to follow the example of Jesus unites us. Together, as engaged disciples, we give on World Communion Sunday to promote unity and empower passionate students to tear down the walls that divide us and lead us to do more through our shared communion in Christ. Together, we do more. Please join us in singing the remaining verses of One Bread, One Body.
thank you for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We pray that this whole experience of World Communion has been uplifting and powerful and meaningful for you, that you will join with us again for online worship, that you can join with us if you'd like for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church at 8.15 and 10.30 a.m. We love to worship with you, to pray with you. We love to be connected with you. So please use that contact form again and remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that the God who created you loves you, that Jesus Christ who saves you loves you, that the Holy Spirit empowers you to gather us all together at Jesus' table of love for mercy and justice and grace and going in powerful service to the world. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.